1 Peter 2, 5 says, You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Listen to the easy to read translation of this. It says, you also are like living stones. God is using you to build up a spiritual house. Did you know God's working on a building? Yeah. <laughs> and he's not building it out of bricks or blocks or timber. He's building it out of us, you. When you see unsaved folks, you should think building materials. <laughs> right? That's right. And uh, you talking about me and you, you are to serve God in this house as holy priests, offering him spiritual sacrifices that he will accept because of Jesus Christ. We are to offer sacrifices to our God. What is a sacrifice? Well, a sacrifice is something that costs you. <laughs> in the Old Testament, their wealth was not in dollar bills. They didn't have paper currency per se, and certainly not plastic. <laughs> so much of the people's wealth, they were an agrarian society, and your wealth was in your livestock. Many parts of the world is still that way today. People's wealth is uh, assessed by their cattle and their sheep, their goats, their camels. And when you took your, your bull and you sacrificed him to the Lord, you, you brought him to the altar and you killed him and you laid the body on the, the altar and you burned it and it went up in smoke. It cost you something, right? It cost you the bull you just gave, and it cost you the calves that he would have uh, gendered, fathered in, in the future. It cost you the, the bull and his future. Right? And you see situations where sometimes they offered a thousand bulls. They'd offer hundreds of lambs and uh, calves. and It cost them something. It'd be no different than you giving your car or, or giving your, half your house. or I mean, cost is cost. Right? right. And the something that I'm, I'm seeing the further I go is that we have developed groups of what I'll call no sacrifice saints. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Brother Keith? Well, they, they are glad to take all you will give them. And they are glad to go to any, any meeting and any seminar where they can find out how to get more and how to live better and how to be free and how to prosper how to be healed, how to be filled and thrilled. <laughs> but I, I'm, I've seen just in the past, you know, 20, 30 years, I've seen too many situations where it, it, it appears people missed God because it was time to do something and the Lord was, gave them an opportunity and, and called them and it was time to sacrifice. It was time to turn loose of some things and lay down some things and give up some things hmm? in order to do what was before you to do. And I've seen person after person struggle and struggle and delay and delay and not do it. And years later, still, and become unhappy and unfulfilled. Friend, 
It's going to cost you something to be a real Christian. Do you believe that? Go with me to the book of Luke. The book of Luke and the 14th chapter. Luke 14, 26, Jesus said, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he what? He what? He cannot be my disciple. He cannot be my disciple. Do you want to be his disciple? Do you want to follow? Not just believe in him and trust him that you're not going to hell when you die, but also be a follower of his in this life and find and follow and fulfill his plan and call for your life. Well, he's saying in order to do that, you can't love anybody or anything, including yourself, more than you do him. And the very next verse, he starts talking about it's going to cost something. Verse 28, uh, 27, whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He's talking about cost. 28, which of you intending to build a tower sits not down first and does what? Counts Counts the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Now, friend, you'll find this. Don't don't try to think about somebody else. Think about yourself. (laughs) If there's anything that you have wanted for a long time and just have not achieved it, have not reached it, have not gotten it, and year after year goes by and you don't get it, you don't achieve it, you don't have it, this is the answer. So many times it's just a matter of not willing to pay the cost. It's going to cost you something. If you want to be the best at football, it's going to cost. I don't care how much natural talent you got, it's going to cost you something. Right? Right. You're going to have to push harder than other people do. You're going to have to practice more. You're going to have to stay with it. If you want to be successful in business, you can't just think about the cars you want to buy and the house you want to live in and the vacations you want to take. You don't get rich by dreaming about the stuff you want. (laughs) Everybody wants to be able to do what they want to do, but few are willing to pay the price that it takes to get it and do it. Again and again, you'll see people who are successful in an area are envied. And one reason they're envied is because people want what they have. They want to be able to do what they can do, but they're not willing to pay the price they've paid. They're not willing to sacrifice. How many believe some things are worth the price? There are things that are not just worth, well worth. Well worth any sacrifice or cost to you. Keep reading this. He said, who will not count the cost to see if he's got enough to finish it? Verse 29, lest happily after he's laid the foundation, is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. Verse 30, saying this man began to build, but he was not able to finish. This describes Thousands upon thousands of things that people started and never finished. They started and never never uh, saw it through to the end. They quit. Why? Because, oh, well, they're happy, they're excited about it, but they, they just launched into it without any commitment. And then when the time dragged on, And it was requiring more and more of their time and money and effort. And it didn't just happen in two weeks. Come on, are you listening? People quit. Why? They were defeated before they ever started. Because they didn't pray and come before the Lord and seek Him to see, am I supposed to do this? 
Am I, are we supposed to have this? Are we supposed to accomplish this? You know, as uh, having oversight of, of the church here, and the church in Sarasota, the projects that we do, this Word Production Center. I didn't think about this on Tuesday and announce it to you the following Sunday. <laughs> Do y'all believe that? Yes, sir. Uh-uh. Why? What do we got to do? What should I do? I should seek him. And I should see if we're supposed to do this. Right? It's not just a matter of can we believe for it. If he tells you to do it, you can believe for it based on he told you to do it. How does faith come? See, there, there, there's a problem of folks trying to do stuff by faith with their faith. We're just going to faith it out. <laughs> faith in what? That's faith in your faith to get something done. is not enough. I said it's not enough. This is the Lord's work. Right? It requires His involvement. It requires His provision. His wisdom. His direction. He's not obligated to provide for and accomplish just anything you and I dream up. Any wild idea we come up with. <laughs> right? We're to go to Him. When we think we're seeing it, we look at it some more. When we think we're getting settled, we pray about it some more. Right? And we check it again. How many know if something's the plan of God today, it'll be the plan of God tomorrow and next week. And next month and next year, he doesn't change. And then we should count the cost. What's it going to take to do this? Try to get some kind of idea. How much time? How much money? And be prepared to dig in and believe and do what you need to do as long as you need to do it. And you are willing to sacrifice what it takes, the unpleasantness, the inconvenience. You're willing to work, get up early and stay till late. You're willing to give and give some more. You're willing to hang in there. Why? Because you set your face like flint to do it before you ever started it. You counted the cost. Too many folks too many preachers, too many ministries, too many churches are too quick to launch things and jump into things. Just because somebody comes up and says, you know, agree with me on this, does not mean you are supposed to. People are too loose and they're too frivolous about, well, listen, you know, pray for me for this. Well, first of all, are you supposed to have it? Are we supposed to do it? Where's our scriptures? What does Holy Spirit say to us about it? Right? This is not just true about the direction and, and things of the, the local church or a ministry. It's true about every Christian household. Even if you're the only one in your household. Right? Where do you move? What job do you take? Who are you working with? Who are you involved with? You're not supposed to just jump at every opportunity. You're not supposed to be led by needs. You're not supposed to be led by suggestions. You're not supposed to be led by opportunities. You're not supposed to be led by price or cost or pay or money. You're supposed to be led by the Spirit of God. And you're supposed to check and make sure and then check and make sure again. And then what do you do? Check again. Right? And make sure again. And then what do you do? Wait some more. And check some more. Right? And I found this to be true from the first thing Phyllis and I ever did. We did in leaving home and going to Bible school and the next phases of our ministry. Every one of them I found that the more and longer I'd seek God and pray about it and look at it, it just gets stronger and stronger in me. And stronger and stronger in me until I get to the place where I know uh, this, this is right. We're supposed to do it. It's time to do it. 
But that might take a couple of years. It, it might take six months. It might, it might take a little while, depending on what you're talking about. Till you get to the, the point of, should we do this, to the point of taking a step. The Bible, Bible said through faith and patience and perseverance, you inherit the promises. Right? Amen. And then once you launch, and you know you're supposed to, there's none of this, we're going to try it. We're not trying anything. <laughs> we're going over to the other side. <laughs> huh? What if the storm rages? We're going over. To the other side. What if the waves get high? We going over. What if the boat fills with water? If we have to, we'll believe God and get out the boat and walk on the water and get to the other side. We're going to the other side. Whatever it costs. How many believe our present generation could use a good dose of whatever it costs? So many folks have come up and their parents meant well, but they babied, they babied them too much. Yeah. Nothing ever cost them anything. They just handed it to them, and gave it to them. And then when they get in life and get into some situation and something begins to cost them something, they think something's terribly wrong. <laughs> this is not easy. It's not going to happen by next Tuesday. <laughs> it's going to cost me not, not just going to cost me it's going to cost me a lot for a long time this can't be God because <laughs> it's not quick and easy <laughs> go to Luke uh, 18 please <laughs> Boy, aren't you glad you came out tonight? Yes. Hear about sacrifice. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think maybe we should have an annual sacrifice meeting? <laughs> it's going to cost you seminar. How about, how about that? I'm joking. <laughs> Unless the boss says so. I'm telling the head of the church says it. That's what we'll have. Uh, <laughs> Luke 18. About verse 23 or so. Let's look at this. You know the story of the rich young ruler. Back up, let's see, to verse 20. Uh, one, he had come to Jesus and asked him what did he need to do? I want you to hear the question now. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What does that sound like? I'm ready to do what it takes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You reckon he thought he was? Yeah. <laughs> you think he thought he was ready? Yeah. He's excited. I mean, he has heard Jesus speak. He has seen miracles he's never seen in his life. He's, he's seen healings. He's heard the most amazing things. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God. He's talking about eternal life. He's talking about the Father in heaven and what's going what's to come. And, and man, he comes to him. And we know he's a good guy. He, he, he's kept the commandments that he had. He's kept the word that he's had. And he says, Master, good Master, what shall I do? Does that sound like I'm ready to pay? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. I'm ready to do what it takes. Yeah. You tell me, what do I need to do? Verse 19, Jesus said, why call me good? There's none good except one. That's God. Keep going. You know the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Verse 21, he said, all these I've kept from my youth up. Verse 22, Jesus said, no, you haven't. <laughs> no, he didn't. 
Apparently the guy had. Yeah. He, he's a good guy. He's a moral man. He's kept, the, he's kept all the commandments since a boy. That's better than a lot. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And he's hungry for God. And he comes running up and says, I, I, what's he saying when he says, tell me what I must do? He's saying, I believe what you preached. I believe. You talking about eternal life? I believe it. I want it. You tell me, what have I got to do to take the next step? What have I got to do to go all the way? I want what you're talking about. Tell me what I need to do. He said, well, you need to keep the commandments like the scripture said. He said, yes, sir. I've done that best I know from my youth. And if you look at uh, other accounts, it says Jesus looked at him and loved him at this point. Why? He knows by revelation. He is a good man. He has a good heart. And he says, yet lack, lackest thou one thing. That's good. That's great. He's saying to him, you, you have kept the commandments. You, you lack one thing. Some other people say, well, that ain't much. Well, it depends on what it is. <laughs> this was much. To him, it was too much to ask. Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that you have. Everybody say, all. all. What's it going to cost him? <laughs> huh? Not everything. Just all his money. Now, if you think money's everything, <laughs> sell all you have, distribute it to the poor, you'll have treasure in heaven. Come follow me, friend. Come follow me. There were people that wanted to follow him, and he said, No. Go back home. Go give your testimony to your city. No, do this. No, do that. And he is saying, go do this. He looked at him and loved him. Something's going on here. And he's personally inviting him to come and travel with him and be with him. And so, naturally, verse 23, what did he do? He heard that and got so excited. <laughs> and got so excited and said, oh, Master, you mean I get to be a part of you and the 12 and the 70 that they'll still be talking about in 2012 in Branson and everywhere else? And... I get, to, I get to be a part of laying the foundation of the eternal church. You, you going to let me be a, a close part of that with you personally? <laughs> Give me 24 hours. Give me 20, <laughs> I, will, I will get my lawyers on the phone. I will get stuff moving on this. When you're leaving town, I, I, I have my bags packed. I'll be with you. Thank you for this opportunity. How long has this man been dead off the earth? Centuries. And his little stuff that he had. <laughs> Whoever knows or cares about his little stuff that he had. If he had made the right choice, would choosing to be with the master, choosing to go with him and be a part of his, his ministry, I, I mean, of all the generations of people that lived before and after, how many got to be a part of Jesus personally with him walking out his ministry and offering himself as the sacrifice? Precious, precious, pre not just in this life. How many believe that will be remembered throughout eternity? How many think the man that carried Jesus' cross will be remembered forever? How many think these 12 that were with him? He said, he didn't just say they're going to be remembered. He said, you're going to sit on 12 thrones with me 
forever. But like millions of other people today, that's not what he said. He heard it and what happened? See, this, this is a, a day and night change. He comes running to Jesus. He's so excited about the message he just heard. He's so excited about the miracles he's just seen. And he says, good master, good master, tell me what I got to do to, to, to have eternal life. What's he saying? I, I want what you're talking about. I want to be a part of this. And, I, and Jesus looked at him and said what he said. And then he said, it's just one thing holding you back. He must have said, yeah, that old dirty money. No. No, Zacchaeus said, I give half of my goods today. And Jesus said, didn't say, oh no, oh no. You have to give it all. Right. No, he didn't. He said, today salvation's come to your house. Right. Right. It ain't about never having any money. Right. It's about your heart. Right. 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 And where your treasure is. That's where your heart is. Right. And how many can see it is so plain that Jesus put his finger by the Spirit of God on where this man's heart was? Yes. Didn't he? His heart was not in God as much as he thought. Because when it came to having to choose between the money and God, he made the wrong choice. It's easy to go to church and say amen and hallelujah. Talk about what you would do, what you're willing to do. Oh, yeah. But you don't know how much you love him till you have to choose. Till it costs you something. That's when you find out what you love the most. And when the master told him what you need to do is liquidate sell out. Come follow me. Come be with me. Come stay with me. Come travel with me. Follow me. And just like that, the guy went from this to this. And just like that, it's revealed what he loves most. What he loves more. Our love is shown in what we're willing to pay. The cost, the sacrifice we're willing to give. Has the Father shown us how much He loves us? Amen. Has Jesus shown us how much? Oh, yes. How much? How much does He love us? Huh? Romans 8.32. Put it up on the screen for us. Romans 8.32. What does it say? He that did what? Spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? When, when folks... I told my, you know what, do you really think God would help me pay my electric bill? Would he even care about such things? No, and surely God wouldn't. He wouldn't give me an expensive car. He don't care about that stuff. Listen, if the father was ever going to say, no, that's too much, it would have been with his son. And having given us his son, what is a car? What is a house? What is a, an electric bill? It's nothing. Right. And he showed you if he'll give you Jesus, which he did, yes. and he has, right. he'll give you anything, yes. which he did, yes. and he has. Yes. We have been given all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Why? He gave it to us when he gave us the master. Yes. It's all in him. Yes. Everything you could ever want, ever need, ever desire. Is there anything God wouldn't give us? No. 
He's proven it. His love is beyond question. It is proven. Yes. Right? Yes. The question is, <laughs> you know what the question is? <laughs> How much do we love him? Right? When can we find out and where will we find out how much we love him? When it's going to cost us something. Right? right? To do his will. When it's going to cost us something. Now the price for sin has been forever paid. And you and I can add nothing to it. You never try to pay for your mistakes. That'd be insulting to the blood. But yet, there are things that you and I can pay in service to Him. To do His will, to accomplish. How many know He wants this gospel preached all over the world? He wants everybody to hear it. And as many that will receive it to believe and be saved, He wants His will to be done in the earth like it is in heaven. Should you and I be willing to go to the farthest ends of the earth? Should we be willing to sacrifice anything in order to accomplish that? Not because somebody's making us, but because we love him with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. Do you keep hearing the word in there? And all our strength. Somebody say all, all, all. I love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Did Jesus say you got to be willing to, to, to give it all if you're going to follow me and be my disciple? Now this is not about you doing some big act to show him that he didn't ask you to do. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about that, that you can give everything you got and give your body to be burned, and if you don't do it because you love, it's worth nothing. No, this is about when you're asked to. Right? God asked Abraham for Isaac, didn't he? Would God ever ask you for your Isaac, whatever that might be? Yeah. And if he does... It's time to shout. Amen. Right? Because he's never about taking something away from you. Right? He wants you to qualify. So he can do something for you. If he's asking you to do something that not everybody's willing to do, it's because he's planning on doing for you things that he's not been able to do for everybody and do through you and with you. Oh, somebody say glory to God. Oh, say it again. Glory to God. Glory to God. Put Matthew 13 up again. You don't have to turn there, but Matthew 13, 44, we looked at this. I want you to see it again. Jesus said the kingdom of God's like a, a treasure that was hid in the field. When a man found it, he hides and for joy, for what? For what? Joy, he goes and does what? He sells all that he has so he can buy that field. Is he depressed over it? No, no he's, just, he's selling everything he's got and he's full of joy. Yeah. This is the picture, saints. Not just, I'll do it. <laughs> I'll lay my life down for Jesus. <laughs> Not like that you won't. <laughs> that doesn't cut it. You got to gladly, that's, that's, that's the key, gladly spend and be spent, Paul said. Why? Nobody's making you do anything. You love him and you want to do it. And if it takes every dime you've got, if it takes every piece of stuff you've got, if it takes all your time, if it takes your last drop of blood, That's right. Glory to God. Yes, we're not trying anything. Right. We're not playing anything. No. We believe this from top to bottom. Oh, yes. And from now to the end. It's real. Yes, it is. Glory to God. 
Hmm? Hallelujah. When something comes up and we see it's going to cost us something, we only got one question. Is it God? Yes. Does He want us to do it? Yeah. Is this really Him? Right? That's, right. That's all we got to get settled. And, and if we find out He wants us to go here, He wants us to do this, He wants us to be a part of this, once you get that settled, now that's no small thing, don't rush past that. But once you get that settled, then it doesn't matter how much it costs no, right. <laughs> or how long it takes. Let's get it done. Yes. Let's please Him. Let's accomplish His will. Right? That's why we breathe. That's why we're here. All things were created for His pleasure and for His glory. We're not just here to retire early and have some fun. You can have some fun along the way, but it's so temporary and fleeting. The real fun starts when we get out of here. Don't get hung up and bogged up. I, I got a glimpse of some stuff. I don't know how. I won't, I won't try to say it all. I got a glimpse of some stuff uh, yesterday and today. I won't even try to, to say anything about it. A glimpse, a little, little bitty glimpse of, and, and just a, a knowing. Friends, the stuff we're going to get to do after this life Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It hasn't entered into the mind of a man. God's revealing it to us, but we have seen so precious little. I'm telling you, we're not going to be bound by limitations of space and time. We're not going to be bound by mortality and ignorance. The stuff we're going to get to do, ruling and reigning with him, it's going to be. And now I just have to talk in tongues to try to say what it's going to be. But it's going to be amazing and awesome. Do you believe it's going to be awesome and amazing? That's, that's the fun. That's down here we got a job to do right now. And the Bible said endure hardness like a good soldier. Down here, we need to, every day, we need to suit up. Did you hear me? We got to know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some price to pay. Right? There's going to be some bullets flying. There's going to be some fiery darts. And there's going to be some stuff. But hey, this is why we're here. And, and what a joy it is to be on the front line. Right in the service of the master. Hmm? Is it going to cost? Yeah, it's going to cost. But the cost, the price, the scripture said, is not even worthy to be compared right. with the glory yes, that shall be revealed. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Go to Luke 7, please. In Luke 7, Jesus came into a man's house that had invited him for a meal. And verse uh, 36, he went into the Pharisee's house and he sat down to, to meet, to food, to eat. And a woman came which was a sinner. I mean, everybody knew this woman was a sinner woman. Now, when everybody in town knows you're a sinner, <laughs> that means you've done some stuff, a lot of stuff, for a long time, right? She had a reputation and not a good one. And when she knew was Jesus was sitting at meat at the Pharisee's house, she brought in an alabaster box of ointment. Now we've seen this before and we know that this kind of box of ointment was worth a year's wage. By the day's standard, how much that is? Average laborer's year, yearly wage. Well, Probably be worth at least 15 grand. If you want to try to bring it into today's money, 20, 25, you know, I don't, it depends on what you make. But let's just say 20 grand. She brings it in, verse 38. 
She stood at his feet, weeping, began to wash his feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Is this costing her? Yes. It's costing her 20 grand right off the bat. It's costing her humbling herself in front of everybody in the house, right? Yes. Being on the floor. You know, what are they going to think? What if he says, what are you doing? Get off of my feet. <laughs> huh? Yes. Risk of rejection, mm -hmm. humiliation. Do you know how many things people don't do because of pride? They're not willing to pay that price. <laughs> I've had to pay that price several times. And I'm not saying I won't have to again. I know I played the piano a little bit by ear and sang poorly. <laughs> Before I went to Bible school, and they asked, "Did any could anybody sing and play? Did they need to?" And uh, so I, uh, I went to the, the Bible school and, and said, "Well, you know, I can sing a little bit and play." And they said, "Okay, show us." And I did, and I could see it in their eyes. <laughs> they were trying to keep from laughing. It was pretty pitiful. And so they, they kind of basically said, you know, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> Probably not. And, and I left, and I thought, man, why did you do that, you know? You shouldn't even have gone. But, you know, at, at the little church where we used to go to, they wanted me to sing and play some. <laughs> but now, you know, you might have been a, a medium fish in a little bitty pond, and, and now you're a tiny fish in a big pond. And, they actually have people that can sing and play. <laughs> and you're not one of them. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, I, uh, I, I thought, well, I, I can improve. And, and actually, I began to, uh, th there was uh, a lady named uh, Cherie that was able to, uh, that taught uh, piano. And then she began to give me some lessons along. I think uh, Phyllis, are they there at the service tonight? Is Cherie there? There is Cherie right there. And David Horton. And Cherie taught me for months about uh, some chords and some progressions. And um, just not long after this, of course, I'm, I, I found out that what little I learned, knew, thought I knew was wrong. And how many of them, sometimes unlearning something is tougher than learning it right the first time. And, and so I'd, she'd show me a few things, and I'd come after class and practice, and I'm sitting there going, bonk, 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 uh-oh, wrong fingers and so because I was used to doing it the wrong way, and bonk, bonk. And I was helping out at the healing school. So they came and uh, asked and said, you know, we want you to do uh, music, play the piano, and lead singing for the healing class. And this is where Brother Hagin spoke. And... Uh, my, my initial response was, my thought was, no. <laughs> no way. I mean, you, you don't want me. And I started to say some of that, and, and they said, yeah, we, uh, we want. I said, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really just learning how. And they said, that's okay. Believe God. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> now, your pride would say, don't make a fool of yourself. But if it's going to cost you somebody thinking this or that about you, does that matter more than you doing what the Lord asked you to do? So I, I found myself saying, okay. I started practicing more. And it was tough at times because I'm doing the best I knew how, plong, 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 and, and singing. And I mean, sometimes, you know, there'd be hundreds of people there. And, and, and Brother Hagin speaking and different things. And, 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 and I look out across the crowd, and there's somebody that could really play. And somebody that could really sing. And you know, they're look, looking at you thinking, is that the best they can do? 
<laughs> and I'd just have to look away and go, <laughs> this is the day, this is the day that the Lord, oops, has made. <laughs> and I, I, the Lord had given, had given me a good ear so I could hear everywhere I'm missing it. <laughs> and you know, a, a thing after thing has been like that, that the Lord dealt with you to do it, and you couldn't do it, and you didn't know how. And, and, and it, was, it was embarrassing. It was hard on your pride, but th that's one of the reasons the Lord wanted you to do it. Because yeah. He wants you to get rid of that stinking, ugly mess. And how are you going to get rid of it and never have to deal with it? Mm, that's good. You got to deal with it to, to get rid of it. And just, just, if somebody says, man, that's lousy, you just go, I'm believing to do better. <laughs> Don't get offended. Don't get hurt. Here's the big question. Are you supposed to be doing it? That's the only thing that matters. And as the months went by and the years went by, I got better. And the Lord began to give me songs. I'm well convinced if I hadn't been willing to do that, we wouldn't have got the songs. You with me, saints? This woman's humbling herself and crying and wiping her, his uh, washed and anointed now feet with her hair. I don't think she cares what they think. Hmm? How many believe we ought to think we ought to care much more about what the master sees and knows than what about any person might? So many times people that are saying unkind things, they don't have a clue what they're talking about and they don't care about it. Why do you care what they say? What does it matter what they say? Who will ever remember what they say? Don't let it bug you. Don't let it get to you. There's only one thing that matters. Am I supposed to be doing this? The Lord asked me to do this. Then we'll not, we won't just do it. We'll do it no matter what it costs. And we will do it gladly. Yes. Gladly. Yes. Rejoicing. <laughs> Keep reading. She washed his feet with tears, wiped them with hairs of her head, kissed his feet, anointed them with ointment. And when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spoke within himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what kind of woman this, this is that's touching him. She's a sinner. He, he was a prophet. If he had it in the sermon, he wouldn't let this awful person touch him. He'd know what a dirty, rotten, low down woman this is. He'd never let her touch his feet. And uh, Jesus said, Simon, this is not Simon Peter, this is the name of the Pharisee he's having the meal with. He says, I got something to say to you. <laughs> he said, Master, say on. <laughs> now, now, verse 39, the Pharisee didn't say that out loud. He said that within himself, that if this man had any spirituality about him, he'd never let this dirty woman touch him. But how many times did the Bible say he knew their thoughts? Yes. <laughs> Revelation. So he says, I got something to say to you. He said, oh, master, say it. <laughs> he said, there was a certain creditor that had two debtors and one owed him 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave both of them. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Are you listening with your spirit, saints? Which of them will what? Love him what? Most. Love him the most. And the Pharisee that he's eating in his house, he said, uh, I suppose that he to whom he forgave the most. He said, uh, you have rightly judged. And then he turned and looked at this woman that's still sobbing and crying. And now her hair is oily and matted and <laughs> she's just a, a mess in the floor. And he said, uh, he's looking at her and talking to him. 
He's looking at her and said, you know, I, I came into your house and you didn't give me any water to wash my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and she wiped them with the hairs of her head. Keep going. You didn't give me a kiss. It was common to, when you came in from kiss you on the cheek. And, but this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. Now, won't you stop right here? Oh, what a lesson we need to learn. He's making fun of what this woman is doing, not realizing he should have been doing it. The Bible says if you judge, you're guilty. My head with oil, you didn't anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Keep going. Wherefore I say to you, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved what? Much. Now I want you to see the connection. The one who loves much gave much, was willing to pay the price of the most expensive thing she had, humble herself, whatever. She didn't care how much it cost. Emotionally, materially, socially, she, how many think that she probably had the idea that she goes in there and tries to do this, they probably going to talk bad to her and kick her out immediately. I, I imagine that's what she expected to happen. And she was willing to take it. <laughs> to just have an opportunity to do this. Wasn't she? She loved much for to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth Little. When it comes time for, for the cost, for the sacrifice, then that's when you find out what you love the most. It's easy to say, I, I, lo I love with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, as long as it don't cost you anything. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Mm -hmm. And we don't know. And you don't know. But when it comes time to cost, that's when you find out. Will you sell out? Will you move? Will you serve over here? Will you work behind the scenes? Nobody see you and know you. Will you take care of it? Will you be willing to do something that you don't have a clue how to do? Will you make changes that you don't really want to make? But hmm? How much are you willing to pay? How much are you willing for it to cost you? Because when you get to the point where you say, you get sad, you get mad, and you get depressed. You know what happened to the rich young ruler? He got upset. He got grieved. He was unwilling to pay the price and went away sad and missed such a glorious opportunity, an eternal part with the Master. Somebody say, not me. By the grace of God, not me. Thank you, Lord. Thanks be unto God. Philippians 2. You, you see this in Paul so clearly. How many believe Paul really loved the Lord with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind, all his strength? How can you tell that he did? He was willing. Was he willing to go anywhere, go through anything? He, he may give us some, some lists of some of the things it cost him. He was stoned three times. He was shipwrecked multiple times. He, all the different stuff. He was snake bitten on isolated islands. He was cast away in the sea. I mean, all kind of things had happened to him. And he had a, an uh, uh, a illustrious you know, career ahead of him. He was the... Uh, Poster boy, the shining upcoming new light of the Pharisees. Yes, right. Set at the feet of Gamaliel and he lost it all when he claimed Jesus, man. And not only did he lose it all, man, they, they, they didn't only take his name off the, the roster, they wouldn't let him in the building anymore. I'm, and he said, I count it all but garbage that I may win Christ. Amen. What's he said? I, I, I don't care what it costs me. Nothing's too much. And, and, and in Philippians here, he's nearing the end of his course. 
the end of his life, the end of his ministry. And in 2, uh, 17, he says this, Philippians 2, 17, he says, yes, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. You'd have to read the rest of it to know what he's talking about. He's talking about they may execute me shortly. Let me read some other translations of this. The the Amplified says it like this. Even if my life blood must be poured out as a libation on the sacrificial offering of your faith to God, I am glad to do it. And I congratulate you all on your share in it. <laughs> Does, is there a cost too great for him to fulfill his call in ministry and ministry and to help the people that God sent? That there is no price too high. There is nothing he wouldn't do. There is nothing he wouldn't sacrifice. The God's Word translation says it like this. My life is being poured out as a part of the sacrifice and service I offer to God for your faith. Yet, I am filled with joy. Hmm? He's not morbid. He's not depressed that it's cost him so much to do this. He's full of joy that he gets to do it. That the Lord would take him. He thought he was so intelligent, but he realized he was completely ignorant and stupid to when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, didn't he? Yeah. He, was, he was enemy of the church. Yeah. And he said it. He said, I'm not worthy because of what I've done to be called an apostle. He said, but I've labored more abundantly than all of them. Yet not me, but the grace of God that was with me. Yeah. Do you think he felt like, man, <laughs> I was a goner. I was mean as a snake. I was on my way to hell. Is that so different from any of the rest of us? (laughs) And God not only saved me, God gave me a place in the ministry. God let me take this gospel to the known world. Yeah, we had a few shipwrecks and a few stonings, but he let me take this gospel to the known world. And you and I are still shouting about it. How many understand the rich young ruler's little money? Who cares about that tonight? But we're still talking about Paul and what happened in him and the price he paid and what it was worth. Is it worth something to you and me? Is what Paul did worth something to you and me in Branson and Sarasota where we are right now? I'm telling you, saints, if you're willing to pay a price... What you do in this life can be affecting people after you're gone. People past your life will be thanking God because you were willing to sacrifice. You were willing to pay a price to get that job done. And your little stuff and my little stuff, nobody will care in such a short amount of time. But this will still exist. In fact, the Bible says it's going to shine like gold. Throughout the ages. Everybody stand on your feet please. We don't know who's watching by internet. We don't know who's watching in the house. How many think everybody ought to confess Jesus as Lord. And not be bashful about it. Said out loud I believe. God has raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess him as Lord. Jesus. My faith is in you for my salvation. And as you help me, I will follow you. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord.